and Sierra Corzell, daughters of Michelle and Scott Corzell. We are at Big Town Central School for basketball, but this is seniors night. The final home game for seniors in the regular schedule. Sierra Corthell and her parents. And Stephanie Corthell as well. Sierra and Stephanie Corthell. For the gentleman Josh Livesey, son of Thomas and Margaret Livesey. Josh Livesey and his parents. And we've seen Tom Livesey play many a softball game. Great shortstop, great hitter, all around player. Cheerleader Stephanie Devins, daughter of Tanya and Gordy Devins. Stephanie Devins. Senior night prior to the Pru uh, at Big Town basketball game. Porter. The Porters, Jacob Porter, senior, number 11. Cheerleader Rachel Holt. Basketball player Garrett Shepler, son of George and Tana Shepler. Garrett Shepler. This is a nice tradition. I do not know when it started or what school Chris, started it. And Michael Chris. Cheerleader Sarah Chris. Parents, thank you for all your support throughout the season. The commitment and dedication has been essential to the program. The time and energy you put into Beat Me Town Athletics is greatly appreciated. Beat Me Town Central School would like to thank all of our senior athletes and wish them the best of luck in their future endeavors. Mr. Bellrose with the announcements. Hello, North Country, and welcome to Beat Me Town Central School for Champlain Valley Athletic Conference Varsity Boys Basketball as Beat Me Town Central meets Peru Central in the final game regular season 2008-2009 basketball season. I'm Foxy Gagnon, joining me on camera is Mark Tiver. Our thanks to Court Street Medical, Dr. Anderson, Dr. Reinhardt, and all the doctors at Court Street Medical for their support of Beekman Town Basketball and of North Country Cable Network. Beekman Town with a record of three wins and 12 losses, and they have a very young team led by the twin sophomore towers of Tom Ryan, number 50, and Devin Anderson, number 42. Their ball handler, Braxton Raymond, 24. Justin Murphy, 24 for Peru. Thanks for the correction. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Got his jersey off right there. 24. Okay, I know him. In fact, good man. He's a good man. There, Justin's dad helping me out a little bit. Very good. Make him our technical advisor. So Beekman Town, we've seen them play many times. They are much better than their three and 12 CVAC record. Beekman Town, coached by Ryan Converse, there on the left, and. The coach of Peru is Matt Berry. Peru has a seven and eight regular season record in the CBAC, seven and eight. 
and they are coming off a big win over Plattsburgh High School in the Hornets' nest. It was a barn burner, and they won it without their leading scorer, Rob Duquette. There's Duquette working near the basket right now. Rob Duquette, the senior, uh, has had uh, several great seasons on the varsity level for Peru and he hopes to close his high school career in fine fashion. Duquette uh, has been known to score 20 more than once during this season. Actually, I, want, I knew I wasn't saying the right thing. Duquette is just a junior and he will be back. He's been on this vars varsity team so long I picture him as a senior, but I'm happy to see he's listed as a junior and he will be back. The officials are Doug Beebe and Pete McMillan. And here you see Pete McMillan talking with Ed Cook, the athletic director of Beekman Town Central. And I spoke with him this afternoon. He made sure we'd have plenty of room for tonight's game. It's Carew Central at Beekman Town Central to close out their CVAC seasons. Beaver Town student and basketball player Cherie Passano will sing the anthem. No, put her on uh, American Idol. She's ready for American Idol there, Cherie. <laughs> Two big boys jump at center. Devin Anderson, 6'5", and Rob Duquette, probably 6'4 and three quarters. They jump at center. Duke at 34. Dan Cameron, number 10 for oh, 14. Joe Mazzella gets the start. 12, Kyle Carter. 50, Mike Novelli. And five, Ben Whitney. They get the start. Beekman Town starts 11, Jacob Porter. 12, Braxton Raymond. 21, Josh Livesey. 32, Garrett Shepler. And 42, Devin Anderson. Whitney to Carter. Carter goes the baseline, the short jumper. No, Whitney rattled it up and tipped it over to Duquette. Duquette gets the first two, Rob Duquette. 30 seconds in, the Indians by two. Inside to Shepler. Now my theory is Beekman Town should work it to the inside, although the big boy right now, Anderson, now he moved to the inside, but you want to try to pick up some fouls early on Duquette, get Duquette's 20-point uh, average out of the game. Whitney went for the steal. Retained by Porter. Anderson inside to Shepler. Shepler high off the glass. And Joe Mazzella. Now Mazzella gets the start and he's coming off an injury to his leg that he suffered in the uh, uh, Plattsburgh game just a few days ago. And it looked at the time like a very serious injury. When he left the gym, I saw him in the parking lot, he was limping quite badly. Whitney goes through, block shot Anderson. First of uh, several he'll have. The swish from Novelli. Eagles hurry it down the floor. Livesey pops. 
Anderson, the tip in, almost went in, and then Duca went for the block shot, picked up a foul. And you want Duquette, if you're Beekman Town and Coach Converse, you want Duquette to pick up some fouls, let me tell you. So to the line is Jacob Porter. I'm Foxy Gagnon, we are North Country Cable Network and Mark Tiffers on camera. Jason Moore, our technical advisor. Porter's second shot, won't go, Duke get the bound. 4-0 Indians as they bring it up the floor and they hurry it up the floor. Mazzella will try another three, three, Joe Mazzella. That's his trademark, the three point shot and Eagles are down seven in the first couple of minutes. Porter tried to go through everybody. Wrestling match on the floor. Whitney gets it from Novelli. Whitney now Carter. Kyle Carter gets it over to Mazella. They move out a little tighter on Mazella. Mazella. Inside in the lane. Novelli. Porter brings it up the floor. Not many touches yet for Braxton Raymond, and you want him to run the offense. And Raymond gets it there. He can drive to the basket, move it and groove it. Shot clock at 15 for the Eagles. Shepler, Porter thought about it. Lizzie, no touches for the big guy Anderson. Rebound Whitney for Peru. Indians working on the perimeter as Duke goes baseline. Mazzella way off the mark on that one, but Carter got it back just inside the arc. Anderson the rebound, outlets it to Porter. Anderson drives by Duquette. Duquette and Anderson battle. Duquette gets it. Carter up the floor, and we're already we're at the midway point of the first quarter. Zoom. Peru seven. Eagles haven't scored yet. Duquette from the outside. Livesey for Beekman Town. Eagles need a bucket. 3.30 to play in the first quarter. Beekman Town, no points. Tipped away as they tried to go to Anderson on the baseline. For Beekman Town, the 10 is Kyle Ledoux, the 54 is Dylan Lemaire. And coming in is Dan Karen for Peru. And a timeout called, 3.26 to play in the Court Street Medical Scoreboard has Peru 7, Beekman Town 0. Town coached by Ryan Converse, a graduate of Seton Catholic Central. Nice one, Ola do, but Shepler missed it. Coach Ryan Converse graduated from Seton Catholic. He's assisted by Pete Bursick, longtime assistant. Duquette with Anderson there. Anderson a foul. Ryan will come in, Tom Ryan. First foul on Anderson. Here's Rob Duca at the line. And in case you didn't know, we have to say it, it's a tradition. Rob Duca's grandpa is Lenny Skillen. Did you know that? I first met Lenny involved with the VFW in Plattsburgh. Video taping some of the events there. Nine 
nothing Indians in the first quarter. Credit the Indians defense. Three big boys now in for Beekman Town. Mazella fouls Ledoux, or Lemaire, but Coach Converse going for the three big boys. Lemaire, I'll tell you, I don't know, he's maybe like a solid 240 or 50, I don't know, I don't want to say. But he's quite a football player. He's a rugged football player, and he uses his weight but he, uh, uh, in basketball to get positioned under the basket, but he can also hit the three-pointer. He's a nice shooter. Finally, the point for the Eagles. Mazella out, and Whitney returns for Peru. One more for Lemaire. Nice high arc. Nine to two. haven't made many mistakes early. There's a travel out front. But the Indians have taken care of the basketball and gotten some good opportunities. And Beatman Town throws it away. Peru ball. Way over there where it started. Since it was not touched the ball goes way over there where it started, where it was uh, entry. For Peru, Justin Murphy comes in. Murphy for Novelli. Travel. Back-to-back -back travels for the Indians. Anderson to inbound it. He directs traffic a little bit. Raymond guarded by Carter. Raymond open, the fake, the block by Carter into the hands of Murphy. Carter thought about it, felt Ledoux there. Nice find down the lane. Whitney blocks out Anderson. Anderson must be among the leaders. Well, he is among the leaders. I don't know if he is the CVAC leader in block shots. We're going to give it to him. Tiffer and I agree. Shot clock wound down, but another travel. Peru, three travels. Three possessions, three travels. It's 9-2. to two. The Eagles need some offense. A minute 38 to go. Somebody's got to step it up offensively. Anderson's all try the three. Ryan on the putback. Got it. Ryan on the rebound. If that's what you got to do, Anderson throws up some threes. And somebody gets a rebound if that's what it's going to take. But it's 9-4. to four. The first nine points by Peru. The Eagles have pecked away with four or the uh yep the eagles and there's duke for the outside you don't really want that and it set up a breakaway for raymond raymond uh, the other end gets two and it's nine to six peru scored nine eagles come back with six 50 seconds in the first it's a different ball game now it was nine nothing things were a little shaky for the in eagles Carter just missed the three, but Duquette got the rebound, the little semi-hook shot. Karen chases after it. I'll tell you, Karen's a hard-nosed ball player. He had a great game against Plattsburgh High School. He was all over the place, he even went out in the hallway once. In and out on the three. 20 seconds for the Eagles. Raymond pulls up short. Tipped by Anderson. Anderson went up and got it. Turn around, Anderson. Big job by Anderson on the boards. Two points to go with his two block shots, and all of a sudden the Eagles are only down by one. And 
That's a quick one. The Court Street Medical Scoreboard. Peru 9, Beekman Town 8. Well, that was some kind of interesting first quarter. It was like uh, Peru for the dominating for the first six minutes and then Beekman Town dominating for the next two. Ledoux overshot it. Murphy there. Mazella there. Raymond chases him down. Nice ball handling Mazella, and they'll call Raymond for the bump. Pete McMillan and Doug Beebe are the officials. For Beekman Town, Ben Smith, sophomore, comes in. Raymond exits. Murphy, Mazella, and Whitney on the perimeter. Karen steps up top. Duquette, nice little give and go. Ryan the rebound, outlets to Smith. Smith challenges Murphy. Rebound Mazzella. Inside the arc, Murphy, rebound Anderson. And if Beekman Town can do the job on the boards, they're gonna be there. Ledoux, the nice fake and make. And guess what? Beekman Town leads 10 to nine. There I was critical of their offense at the beginning. They shut me up in a hurry. They said, Boxy, take that. 10 to nine, Eagles. And Peru hasn't scored in a while. I don't want to say too much, but Peru hasn't scored in a while. I hit the concession stand early. I got out here a little early. Hit the concession stand, got a hot dog on a wheat bun. What do you think of that? On a wheat bun. Nah, that's my second wheat bun. I gave it a second try. I'm all done getting hot dogs on wheat buns. No, I want it on regular buns. I'm bringing my own bun next time. 6.08 to play in the second quarter. Beekman Town by one, and Peru has not scored in a long time. They're on a scoring drought. Good defense, Whitney. A two-on-one for the Indians. Carter to Murphy on the run. Nice one. Carter to Murphy on the run. And those two dads are standing side by side. They were happy about that one. It's 11 to 10. Uh, Beamington had run off 10 unanswered points. Eleven ten lead for the Indians now in the second quarter. Lamare with Murphy guarding him. Nice bucket. And Beeman Town back up by one. Ducat, but felt Ryan hovering all over him. Murphy, the nice two pointer. Murphy back to back baskets, but then Shepler all alone. The lead back to the Eagles. Shepler with a couple of buckets in the second quarter and the lead continues to seesaw. Too hard off the glass, Ryan there. 
Eagles by one, nearing the midway point of the second quarter. Timeout, Beekman Town 4-13 to play in the second. It's Beekman Town 14, Peru 13. There's Ann Mazella. We wanted to, we were going to mention Ann Mazella and uh, her son Joe plays. You might have heard of Chris Mazella, former basketball coach at Peru, um, is her husband. But Ann Mazella is a teacher at Peru Central, formerly at Beekman Town Central. She was my son's uh, favorite English teacher back when my son was at Bingman Town from 96, uh, from, uh, oh gosh, when did Eric graduate college? 2000, so 96, no, around 96. My kid's older than I want to admit. Nice basket, Brad Miller, but I talked with Ann Mazella prior to the game time about Chekhov. Can you believe I was talking Chekhov and a short story called Gooseberries with um, Ann Mazella, and that happens to be one of my son's all-time favorite uh, stories, short stories. I think it's a short story or a play by Chekhov. Miss Mazella knows a lot more about Chekhov than I do, and Eric knows a lot more about Chekhov. It made Eric a great fan of Anton Chekhov. It's Eagles by three. And remember when Peru jumped out to the 9-0 lead, Town has taken over 16-4 since then. And you're looking at the Town, the best 3-12 team in a long time in the CBAC. People look at the 3-12 record, they're way better than that. Nice spin and grin by Garrett Shepler. Shepler with a six pack of points, and the Eagles are up by five. Mavelli Murphy, Carter, and the jumper Novelli with the swish. Mike Novelli, even though Ryan was coming after him. Eagles by three. Raymond in the lane, inside for Ryan, and Novelli was there on the defense. I thought Novelli was going to be called for a foul, but um, Ryan was called for three seconds. Shepler leaves, and Anderson comes back in, so it's Anderson and Ryan as the big boys, and then Helping out on the boards will be uh, Brad Miller. Duquette will return for Peru, and Murphy exits. Nice job by Justin Murphy for the time he was in. Ooh, Carter, and then batted away by Raymond. That little hesitation by Carter cost him. Raymond for Anderson. Oh, it went in and out. How could that pop out? How could that pop out? You ask me about that basketball game. It's a funny game. That was as good as in. How could that ball pop out? We need like a physicist. No, that be physics. That be physics. So it'd be a physicist. We need a physicist here to explain that one. Who teaches physics at Beekman Town? Well, it's end-to-end -end action, but the play has been rather sporadic. <laughs> if you do your research, you can come up with those big words. If you hire the right videographers and stuff, you know, some of their knowledge kind of rubs off on you. Just a minute 24 to play in the first half. Now 
Now the surprise for me is Rob Duquette with just four points, but he hasn't seen a lot of the basketball. Missed that shot. Used the left hand nicely. Ryan on the defense. Oh, Bigman down threw it away. They had a guaranteed two on one and they threw it away. But Ryan Converse stayed cool. He didn't throw a tantrum. He got up, adjusted the belt and said, okay. Gave him a little applause. Mistakes can be made sometime. I personally never shot the ball away when I played high school ball. <laughs> One minute left in the first half. Novelli gets it back. Oh, he might have traveled or something. The refs are letting him play. Then you like that. Let him play. Carter, short. Anderson there. They surround him. Whitney there. 30 seconds for Beekman Town. They are up by three. Shot clock is off. 20 seconds for the Eagles. Coach Converse wants the final shot. 10 seconds for the Eagles. Inside for Ryan. He's fouled by Carter. Ryan will go to the line for two. He's a good foul shooter. The Eagles are two for four from the line and Peru two for two. Not many fouls called, just seven total in the first half. And now you kind of credit the refs, letting him play a little bit. Here's two shots for Tom Ryan, transfer student from Seton Catholic. Ryan gives the Eagles a four point lead with 7.7 .7 to go in the first half. Peru ball with 5.7 seconds. play. Initially, the big play by Ben Smith to break that up and almost got it back. At halftime, the Court Street Medical Scoreboard shows Pigment Town 19, Peru 15. We have veteran uh, referees here tonight, Pete McMillan and Doug Beebe, and they are keeping this show on the move. Ready for play, we're in the third quarter. In the first half, Peru, nine points in the first quarter, and they got them kind of quickly. And six only in the second quarter. Mozilla, three! Just what the doctor ordered. Mozilla hits his second three. And the four point lead melts to one. For Beekman Town, eight in the first quarter. It took them a long time to get started, but then in the last minute and a half or so, they scored eight points. And then 11 in the second quarter. But Mazella's three pointer, his second one of the game, just a one point lead inside to Ryan, and he dropped it in. Ryan now with five, and Scheffler six, leading the way for Beekman Town. Novelli, Anderson the rebound. Anderson with just two points, but plenty of rebounds and two block shots. Ryan fouled by Novelli. They've got Duquette guarding Anderson, I do believe, and Ryan Converse, Beekman Town coach, starts out with the three big boys. Uh, they threw Lemaire into the mix. So you have Ryan and Anderson and Lemaire. Here's Ryan, one for two from the charity strike. Beekman Town now back up to a four point lead. They make it five. I talked to uh, his grandpa tonight before the game, had a nice chit chat. 
about sports in general and quarterbacks and football. Raymond hits the floor and over there for Peru is Car uh, Carter. Anderson looks, Duke right in front of him. Ledoux down the lane, missed the shot, tipped around, Novelli outlets to Whitney. Mark Tiffer's on camera. Yes, he of Tiffer Productions. I'm Foxy Gagnon, we are North Country Cable Network. Oh, Duke lost the handle, Lemaire saved it for the Eagles. Our thanks to Court Street Medical. That would be Drs. Reinhardt, Dr. Anderson, uh, Drs. Reinhardt and Anderson. And mm, I wish I knew the other doctors that were there at Court Street Medical, but those are the two that I know better than the other doctors. Ryan the putback. Tommy Ryan doing a bang up job out of the locker room. He has six in the third quarter, all of Beekman Town's points, and it's a seven-point Eagles lead. Right there, nice pass, Novelli to Duquette. Duquette looked like he could have dunked it. Duquette's had two dunks this year. We'd love to see one tonight. And Anderson muscled his way to the hoop. The quick move by Devin Anderson, nice one. And back up, 27-20, Beekman Town with a seven point lead. The Indians jumped out nine nothing. It looked like they were gonna have an easy road. Duquet on the inside, works for the shot. Well, they're going to Duquet, and that's something you wanna do. 27 to 22. There's some cheering going on in the press box, but we don't mind. Dads are allowed to cheer. Anderson drops it for Ryan. Ryan drops it in. Ryan eight points in the quarter, 11 in the game, and back up to seven. Peru can't get any closer than that. They get it to five, and then the Eagles score. Mazzella open on the other wing, there he is, and he hits the three. Three! Joe Mazzella making it look easy. Mazzella, I'll tell you, Anton Chekhov never hit a three-pointer, Joe Mazzella does. 29 to 25. We are just past the midway point of the third quarter. A held ball called and the possession arrow to Beekman Town. Right now it's Karen, Mazella, and Carter and Whitney, a smaller group, working with Ducat. Novelli out taking a rest. Lynn Ledoux off the glass and in. Nice job, Ledoux. Eagles by the six pack. Karen brings it down. Rebound Ryan. Ryan up ahead for Ledoux. Carter there. Ledoux, what a nice move. Kyle Ledoux. Ledoux showing some NBA moves. 3.24 to play in the third quarter. Beekman down 33 and Peru Central 25. Well, we have about 11 minutes of basketball left, and Peru's got their work cut out for them. I know it's only eight points, but the way Beekman Town is going right now, Beekman Town with 14 points in the quarter. Their offense cranked up. Ledoux with the high hand, it's another one. 
Kyle Ledoux had two at halftime, and he picks up a six-pack more in this quarter. Ryan and Ledoux with most of the Eagle points in the quarter. And it's a 10-point lead. They need Duquette. Ryan fouls Duquette. The Duquette shot will count. Rob Duquette now with 10 points. And Mazzella with nine. Just four Indians have scored. Duquette is a perfect three for three from the foul line. And they double team. They put the squeeze on Ledoux there and tie him up. Mazella and Carter team up. Ryan takes a breather. Shepler returns. Remember, Shepler had those six points in the second quarter. There's like a brand new baby here, like a baby like about two months old or something, just a brand new baby here in the crowd. Crying tonight. There's no crying in basketball. What's that all about? You can't have crying in basketball. Nice steal, and what's the call? A Beekman Town foul. They call Anderson for his second foul. Set up the three for Carter. Three! Kyle Carter hits the three. And all of a sudden, remember it was 35-25? It's 35-31. The Indians are coming back. 2.04 to play in the third quarter. The Court Street Medical Scoreboard shows Eagles 35, Indians 31. Braxton Raymond back in for Beekman Town. Oh boy, they're putting the squeeze on Lemaire. Anderson missed shot. Rebound Mazella. Peru down by four. They go to Duquette again. Duquette the putback. Duquette showing his athleticism. Duquette with nine points in the quarter. Shepler to Ledoux. Ledoux, the move and grove. Kyle Ledoux, dandy play. Shepler fouls Whitney. 37 to 33. Already this is shaping up as a nail biter. Some of the dads nearby is getting sweaty armpits already. Ben Whitney, some little baby still crying. Frankly, the kid is getting on my nerves. <laughs> I'm only kidding, folks. Don't take away your cable subscription because I said that. 37 to 34. Big offensive quarter for both teams when you consider it was just 19-15 at halftime. Who got that one? Who got that one? Anderson? Anderson got that one. I was looking at my score sheet. Anderson. Ledoux. Shepler. Anderson near the basket, used the left hand, Duke it on the defense. Anderson to the floor, I hope he's okay. Is there a doctor in the house? I hope he's okay, is there a doctor here? Okay, good, he's all right. All right, he hustles right back out. Oh, this poor little baby, huh, crying? How old's the baby? I said two months, I'm probably wrong. I was four months old, named? Mia Elizabeth. Uh, Mia? Mia. Oh, Mia Elizabeth, how nice. Mia's so beautiful. Oh, I missed the point. Oh, who scored that last one? Oh, who made the Peru basket? <laughs> I was I was kidding. I said, there's no crying in basketball. You can't be doing that. <laughs> we'll find out.
find out who made the last Peru basket. I was talking with Mia. 39 to 36. Look, do again! At the buzzer, Carter! It's good! It's good! It's good! A three-pointer, Carter! At the buzzer! What a finish to the third quarter! After three, it is Pigmentel 41, Peru 39. Well, huge third quarter for Peru. 24 points. And for Beekman Town, 22 points. And we are buckled up for a big finish. Duquette made the basket, the one I wasn't sure who made it because I was talking to Mia. It was Duca, and then Duca just got the last one. Ryan finds Lemaire and a Peru foul. There haven't been a lot of fouls called, and I credit the officials. They have let these teams play, and you have to like that. So a big fourth quarter, a third quarter. Each team scored more in the third quarter than they did in the entire first half. So they really lit things up. Now here's Lemaire at the line for the swish. He's three for three, and it's 42 to 41. Duca had just tied it up, 41 all. And Duca to Whitney. Indians down by one. Great basketball game to end the season. It doesn't end our coverage though. Carter, Kyle Carter, his third three. Mazella and Carter totaling six three-pointers. And how's your math? That's 18 points right there. Boom. Peru by two. Inside to Duca. The jumper. Does Duca ever miss? Duquette with 19 points. They double team Raymond. And Raymond threw the ball on the face of Carter. This is getting a little intense. Fans are into it. Players giving it their all. CBAC basketball 2008-09 season. Final game of the regular season and then it's on to sectionals. Beekman Town turnover. Players getting a little frustrated from the pushing. And again, the, the refs for the most part are letting them play. Let the game be decided by the players. What do we have? There's a little discussion. Doug Beebe and Pete McMillan. It's Peru 46, Beekman Town 42. It was Peru by one after one. It was Beekman Town by four at halftime. It was Beekman Town by two after three. But in this quarter, the fourth quarter, in the first two minutes, Peru a three-pointer by Carter, and Duca a couple of buckets, seven points. Beekman Town just a foul shot. Duca on the boards, and it goes in. Duke had a whale of a second half. He had just four at halftime. Beeman Town takes a timeout. The Indians got a little surly when they fell behind by 10 at one point. 
And uh, since then, they have rebounded and 5.49 to go in the fourth. Since Beekmantown went up 35-25 early in the third quarter. Since that point, Peru 23, Beekmantown 7. So the Indians have come storming back. Whitney almost a steal. And Peru is up by 6, 48-42. And you've got to contain Duca. And not to mention those three-point shooting guards. Inside to Anderson, nice one. Lemaire to Anderson. And if you're Beekman Town, you gotta to go inside to Anderson and Ryan and Lemaire. Although the two inside are Ryan and Anderson. Ryan fouls Duca. Second foul on Ryan. Four point Peru lead. Whitney. It'll be Big Town ball. Duquette now with 21 points. Called for a push. Matt Berry questions the call, although he knows Pete McMillan, he may not want to question it too much. Forty-eight to forty-four. That Peru defense in the backcourt giving Beekman Town fit. Whitney, Mazella, Karen, and Carter. Raymond in, and the exit by Smith. Four point lead for Peru. I'm going to the movies after the game. Yeah, I think I might go to the movies. Something about Mall Cop. Yeah, I've been invited to the movies by Jacqueline and uh, Timber there. Yeah. <laughs> They're even going to buy me popcorn. <laughs> Duquette tried to save it. I hope she doesn't read her book about parallelograms there. She's not going to read her book at the movies, does she? She's got this book out at the basketball game about parallelograms and all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't understand any of it. It's called uh, Linear Algebra. Oh, my goodness. I can barely spell that. A three-on-one. Raymond, the defense. Ryan called for the push on Duquette. Ryan goes stomping off. You don't want to really do that. You, you, they, they called the foul on you. You don't want to go st off stomping. Third foul on Ryan. Mazzella to inbound it. Back in our day for fouls, you didn't go stomping off. What you did is raise your hand so everybody in the building knew it was your foul. The old timers like me will remember that. Inside to Ryan. Carter to Whitney. Ryan fouls Whitney and it'll count. Four fouls on Ryan, and that's just frustration. Now, Ryan totally frustrated. Ben Whitney at the line for two shots. He's one for two. It's a six-point lead for Peru at the midway point of the fourth quarter. Karen called for a foul. Karen called for a foul, grabbed a uh, shirt or grabbed somebody. Hey, 
seven point lead. Seven point lead for Perot. Beeman down turnover, midway point of the fourth quarter. on the perimeter, they have the seven point lead. Mazzella inside for Duca. Shot clock at eight. Oh, why would you pick up a foul with five seconds on the shot clock and then a technical foul on Town? Town losing its composure in the fourth quarter, no question about it. And Duquette goes to the line. These veteran officials will certainly keep the game under control. Duquette's second shot missed. So Duke has shot the technical fouls. Now Mazella shoots a one and one, I guess. I don't know. Let's see. And Peru will have the ball. Mazella sinks that one. Joe Mazella now with ten points. Excellent shooter, no wonder. He was in the gym when he was like three years old and we have a timeout, 54 for Peru, 44 for Beekman Town. Three seventeen to go, Peru can afford to take its time and then let Mazella throw up a three. Mazella making it look so easy on those threes. Karen need the basket gets two. We'll recap all the scoring. Peru foul. Since the Beekman Town 10 point lead at the beginning of the third quarter, Peru 34, Beekman Town 9. Mozella picked up his second foul. This is Brad Miller. Six for 11. Seven for 12 are the Eagles from the foul line. And a timeout call, 2.35 to go in this one. Our thanks to Court Street Medical for their support of Beekman Town Basketball and North Country Cable Network. And it's Peru 59, Beekman Town 45. Always a pleasure to work with Mark Tiffer of Tiffer Productions, a Plattsburgh High School graduate way back when. Duquette from the outside, and Anderson lost the handle on the rebound, couldn't quite grab it, rolled off the fingertips. Both teams, hey, this was a hard fought game. I'm gonna give credit to both teams for giving us a great game. The fans really enjoyed it. And uh, Peru pulled away at the end. They're up by 14 with 2.14 to go. Mazzella to inbound it. Duquette dishes out. Peru will use the shot clock, no hurry. 
Matt Berry had to do some coaching tonight. Ryan Converse had him on the ropes. Peru scored the first nine of the game. Eagles came back and scored 10. First quarter ended with Peru up by one. Halftime, Beekman Town by four. Early in the third quarter, Beekman Town extended the lead to 10. And then the Indians, something lit a fire under the Indians. We have a minute 42 to go. Ryan in the paint with Duquette there. Anderson, the rebound and the putback. back. Anderson, the sophomore with 10. Ryan, the sophomore with a handful of points, couple of handfuls of points. Lemaire fouls Whitney. We're down to a minute 25. If we recap the Beekman Town scoring, Kyle Ledoux, 10 points in the third quarter, and he has 12. Braxton Raymond, two points. Brad Miller, three points. Garrett Shepler, six, all in the second quarter. Devin Anderson with 10. Dylan Lemaire, three. And Tom Ryan with 11. Ledoux, 12, Ryan, 11, and Anderson, 10. For Peru, you have, a, here's a sub, as um, Joel Masol, Masol, Joel Masol comes in, number four, for Peru. Travel call for um, Peru. Ben Whitney with four points, all from the foul line. Dan Karen with two. Kyle Carter with nine, all by way of the three-pointers. Joe Mazzella with 14, with four three-pointers. Justin Murphy with four. Three! Raymond, a deep three. Finished the Peru scoring. Um, I said Murphy with four, Novelli with four, and Rob Duquette, the junior, with 22. 22 and 18 of those, oh no, yeah, 18 of those in the second half. Just 64 seconds left to go, and it's 61 for Peru, 50 for Beacontown. Will they foul? They foul Mazella. So Mazella goes to the line. That could be the tenth foul. Two shots. Mazella for two. He is two for two from the line. Good foul shooting by Peru tonight. Nine for 10, 10 for 11. No, that can't be right. 10 for 12 or something like that. They've only missed a couple from the line. Mazella now with 15 points. Make that 16, oh boy. This could be his highest uh, point total. Mazella, just a sophomore, by the way. That's a Peru foul. If you're Peru, you don't want to bother to foul with 50 seconds. You don't want to foul if you're Peru. That one called on somebody. 3-4, Duquette. Duquette's second foul. Here's Ryan at the line. Four for five from the line is Ryan. And with that five for six, he now has 13 points. Now 
Ben Whitney back to the line. Interception, uh, Masol. And another beating the town foul. Ryan gets his fifth foul and exits, and Whitney back to the line. Case to make those foul shots, huh? Now with six points. Now with six points. Duke hit, grabbed it. Anderson grabs it. 38 seconds. Why did Carter foul Raymond in three-point range? I don't get that one. 13-point lead. Unless Raymond was about to make a 13-point shot, you just let him shoot it. And in a game like this, it doesn't really matter, but wow, could it in a close game in sectionals? It could really matter if you make a mistake like that. So Raymond finishes with six points. And Coach Ryan Conover is calling no fouls. 18 seconds. Shot clock is off. And if Beekman Town's not going to foul, Peru can just sit on the ball. And Raymond goes for the steal. Put back. Two points for Smith, his first basket of the game. Our thanks to Court Street Medical for their support of uh, North Country Cable Network. Our thanks to Mark Tiver for his work on camera. Final score, Peru Central 65, Beekman Town Central 55. This is Foxy Gagnon on behalf of everyone at North Country Cable Network saying as always, good night, North Country.